been just so much uh, been played so much more uh, you know a few weeks ago but people have tested the format more really not felt great about the deck maybe and just opted for other things like Turbo Dark and like Mewtwo but Harry here has made it to six and one with the deck of course players need to get to a six two and one record to make it into the second day of competition so a win or tie in this round would lock either player for it as these guys are setting out their prize cards. Yeah, so it looks like Harry is on the Ultra Necrozma version where it plays Octillery and Alolan Muck. Uh, Alolan Muck having that power of alchemy ability is essentially just a silent lab that really is really hard to get rid of. Right, and I think that um, I think this is a problem that a lot of people had with the deck, right? Why they decided to opt away from it is that playing it with Garbodor, you just didn't have very consistent draw through the late game. Octillery, however, can allow you to kind of get through that, right? You can play Alolan Muck. It only shuts off basics abilities, so Abyssal Hand from Octillery is still active, allowing you to draw those extra cards. All right, game starts now, and it looks like... I think Harry went first and passed. Is that what happened? Uh, unless it was a mulligan, but he has an extra card in hand. Uh, oh, I'm, yeah. I'm pretty sure he went first and passed. So It doesn't look like he has much going on, so that would make sense. Yeah, that's big news for Brad here. Starts off with a battle compressor, being able to discard any attacker he's going to need for these next few turns. Uh, this matchup is kind of a little back and forth, though, uh, because of Silent Lab, I'm guessing. Yeah, Silent Lab is definitely a big key here in the matchup for Harry. It does turn off the perfection ability from the Mewtwo and Mew. Another big factor here is the fact that Luster of Downfall discards an energy, right? A lot of these attacks that Brad would want to use that can hit for the 110 damage to knock out Harry's Pokemon um, might require two energies. He does have the Guard of War, however, as we see him discarding it right away. So it seems like that's kind of the strategy he's going to want to employ in this matchup. Yeah, and he is opting for a supporter to discard. Chooses the Professor Sycamore over the Guzma and Hala. You can kind of see he was debating, right? Which one do I take? He, if he wants to get an attack off this turn, he's going to need a Float Stone, of course. And Guzma Hala can find the tool card plus the Stadium and Special Energy, but that doesn't do much for him if he doesn't have the Mewtwo in his hand yet. So I think Sycamore is what he's going to opt for for that reason. And yeah, playing uh, this deck a lot, like this is one of my favorite decks sure. in Expanded. Um, there's a lot of different options and routes that you can do throughout each of your turns. The biggest trouble about this deck is finding that Mewtwo and Mew Tag Team GX. Oh man, how many games <laughs> I lost where I just like, I have everything, but I cannot Where's my Mewtwo, right? And we see Brad is actually just going to go ahead and throw down the Jirachi and attach a double colorless energy to it, maybe just wanting to have it as a pivot for later on. And Harry's just going to draw and pass once again. Yeah, his hand is full of teammates, and that's a uh, card that is only good if your opponent knocks out a Pokemon, and he has no other Pokemon in sight. Uh, but Brad is locking himself out of the game right now. That Wobbuffet in the active spot, that Bide Bar Barricade is a, uh, shutting off all abilities except for Psychic Pokemon. Well, he has a Shaman EX in his hand, and he's not able to play it down. He did have the option of attaching the Double Colorless to the Wobbuffet, and retreating to something like Jirachi, and then you can set up. But I think he's valuing the actual ability lock against his opponent, which kind of shouldn't. And Harry, thankfully, was able to find something useful on his top deck this turn. Cynthia going to allow him to shuffle six cards into or his hand into his deck and then draw six cards does get the Silent Lab in play. All he needs, the only missing piece of the puzzle now, is that Double Dragon energy, and we'll see a Luster of Downfall right away. And uh, also is wanting to find some more basic Pokemon, yes. just in case Brad does draw something here. He does find the Counter Energy, but I don't see the Double Dragon. Counter Energy is a really interesting inclusion in this deck. Of course, if you are behind on prize cards, it provides two energy of every type. But if you're you know, ahead or tied, it's just going to be one colorless energy. So really interesting inclusion. Just once you're behind it, it kind of allows you to get an extra attack off with an Ultra Necrozma. It's basically like your fifth or sixth energy sure. in the deck. And then it also does open... Uh, some other tech plays as well. Yeah, absolutely. I'm not sure if he's got any other like tech attackers. Sometimes we'll see things that play counter energy include like the pseudo Wudo from Breakpoint. He, he does play one pseudo Wudo and one Kabalion. Okay, so he's got those counter attacker options. I love to see those things. Um, very you know niche uses, of course. 
Um, Harry, also just going to Ultra Ball here, does find the Remoraid, if he can find Octillery on the next turn, can start using Abyssal Hand, and the earlier you set up the Octillery, the more use you're, of course, going to get at, through it the rest of the game. Yeah, um, but with Harry actually playing a bunch of Pokemon down now, it does open up Brad's hand a little bit. He does have a Guzma. Sure. So he will be able to Guzma his own Wobbuffet out of the active spot and then try to get set up with the Shaman EX in his hand. And kind of an interesting interaction as well is the fact that, um, you know, Brad's Wobbuffet is active. You might say, oh, that means that he can't use the Abyssal Hand, but with the Silent Lab he had in play, it would actually turn off Bide Barricade and allow for that. Brad, like you said, his hand was able to be opened up a little bit thanks to Harry benching those Pokemon. Guzma brings up the Rimmeraid, and Shaman able to draw him a pretty sizable chunk of cards. Yeah, uh, there's the Mewtwo and Mew GX tag team coming down with a Prism Energy. He will be able to retreat, and then I think he's going to have to opt for a Distort or the Despair Ray. Distort does not take the knockout here, but... I think the item lock is more important for him. Yeah, I think this is a smart play. Most people would probably just be like, yeah, I'm going to take my knockout here, you know, use Despair Ray, I get rid of my Shaman. You know, that's pretty good for me. Uh, but Brad knows that he can buy himself a little time. Uh, Harry's only real out would be a Guzma, and he's only got a two-card hand. Um, Harry does, however, have a Cynthia in hand. Going to choose to Abyssal Hand first since he's at a pretty low hand size. Found all the supporters. Yeah, there they are. That's where they were hiding. Does find a Silent Lab as well. So, um, unfortunately, won't be able to play a Float Stone to move this Octillery. Um, so, I think it's just probably going to... I unfortunately don't think we're going to see an attack here from Harry this turn. No attack, but you do have a chance this turn to actually uh, stop your opponent from putting any pressure on yourself. Right. Uh, you see Brad use the Field Blower last turn as well as Dimension Valley. So that's just limiting another out to Silent Lab form. And then a Faba coming down, hitting that Prism Energy as well. That was probably the best supporter he could play right now. Yeah, definitely a fine uh, spot to be in. It prevents Brad, like we said, from getting those extra energies in play to use some of these other more powerful attacks. And I think the biggest thing as well here was Harry using this Silent Lab in order to um, you know, turn off this Mewtwo and Mew, getting rid of another Dimension Valley on Brad's side. That's just another counterpiece that Brad's going to have to find in order to even be able to attack uh, with his perfection ability. And there is a Cherish Ball coming down. Brad is looking through his options. Granted, uh, Cherish Ball is pretty good to get something like Dead and AGX, but when your opponent has Silent Lab in play, it's not very good. So he's looking just to kind of thin out his deck a little bit. Kabalion GX doesn't really seem too important in this matchup. Yeah, I, I guess he could use the Iron Rule GX attack to buy a turn if he wanted to, but that doesn't seem like a great use of your GX attack for the game. So I think, like you said, he's just getting it out of the deck, and maybe we'll see like a Sycamore or something like that, just putting it in the discard. Yeah, and there is the Versus Seeker for Brad here. And like you said, Sycamore discarding his hand. A bunch of stuff you don't want in your hand. Yeah, lots of Pokemon that you actually want in the discard pile. I think that's something that people you know, don't realize a lot about the trading card game is that you really, there are so many cards that just interact very well with the discard pile. You're, why would you want to discard cards, right? Um, and Mewtwo and Mew, of course, being one of them. So this hand is usually very good from Brad here, but with Silent Lab, there's no out to it. No way to draw extra cards. He's going to have to pass the turn and... Harry did exactly what he needed to do. I think he still has that Guzma and Hala in his hand to start attacking next turn. Yeah, and it is just going to have to be a pass. No longer item locked. We do see the Guzma Hala like you mentioned. This can get him the Pokemon uh, tool card as well as a special energy and a stadium. That can put the Silent Lab in his hand for the next turn. So he has an immediate response if Brad is able to find a Dimension Valley. Yeah, and of course the, the Float Stone to retreat the active. Uh, and the biggest part is the Octillery not getting knocked out. He's going to have a constant source of draw, at least for the next few turns. So we see the cards right here that uh, Harry is grabbing. Looks like he's eyeing up just the Double Dragon Energy and the Floatstone. Not finding the Stadium. I think maybe 
he, uh, he could have prized his fourth stadium. I think this is his third one in play. Um, so that's going to be something that he needs to keep in mind of as far as you know, keeping account of his resources. But also, he could just want to draw an extra card here off of the uh, Abyssal Hand from Octillery. Yeah, and well, one thing you also don't want to do is clog up all those Silent Labs in your hand and then be forced to discard them with the Sycamore. Right. Oh, and he actually drew another one, yeah. So he does find it as well and will retreat right away using Luster of Downfall. 170 damage, really solid amount of damage putting, uh, getting put onto this Mewtwo. Of course, we're, I think, used to with things like Turbo Dark and then Megalopony and Jigglypuff, just these one-hit KOs back and forth. But when you have a one-prize Pokemon like Ultra Necrozma that can hit for a high amount of damage like this Ultra Necrozma, um, it's, it just really is a recipe for success. Brad starts his turn, draws a Versus Seeker, plays the Battle Compressor. So he will be able to at least do stuff this turn. He has an N that he has access to, Versus Seeker, if he wants. But he's really going to need to eye down a Dimension Valley to actually start attacking again. Uh, as long as the Silent Lab's in play, he, he's pretty useless. Yeah, there's not much he's going to be able to do. We're going to see a couple of... Giratina's hit the discard pile, of course, that Distortion Door ability. Combos really well with, you know, things like the Gardevoir's um, Despair Ray attack, where you can just throw them all onto your bench and then discard them right away. It just kind of lets you, like, cheat extra damage into play, because Gardevoir's attack also does more for each Pokemon you discard with it. Um, and it's yep. interesting to see Brad discard the Guzma Hollow. We could see him actually utilize it here. I think that's exactly what he's going to go for, because he's really searching for Dimension Valley and Energy. Well, guess what Guzman and Hala does? <laughs> it gets Dimension Valley, an energy, and a tool. Yeah, he's going to have just about everything set up he can want. And the tool here actually being the Stealthy Hood is going to be really key for him in this matchup once Harry eventually sets up an Alolan Muck. Because that's the only way that he can attack with perfection um, once that you know, Power of Alchemy ability comes into play. Yeah, and with no Alolan Grimer in sight for Harry, uh, Brad's looking pretty good here. Uh, opts to even discard the Stealthy Hood. He's like, yeah, I don't need it. I need this second Mewtwo and Mew better. And this could be a situation where Brad's not even aware that the Muck is in Harry's deck, right? I feel like a lot of the lists we've seen online are like focusing on Garbodor. Maybe the Octillery could be a tell that right away that it's probably a Muck version, but Brad's saying, I don't need it. I'm just going to win with aggression. Ooh. And pretty cleans out the hand, uses Dead A Change. Yeah, discarding zero cards. <laughs> brand new six. Uh, I was thinking if he was going to opt to go for uh, like a couple distortion doors and build up the damage on the artillery on the bench, it might here he just will clean up still, but use, or he's even eyeing distort. Yeah, and this is, there's actually um, a big part of this matchup. If Brad can ever get to two energy on a Mewtwo and Mew, he could just use Sonic Volume with Noivern and make it so that Harry can't put special energy in play. I'm not sure if Harry's playing a Pokemon Ranger. If not, that would actually just totally lock Harry out of the game. Of course, Distort says that your opponent can't play any special energy from their hand during their turn, and Harry only playing those Double Dragon and Counter Energies, both being specials. It does look like he has the one copy in his list. Okay. So that would be a, an answer if Brad was able to go that route, but I still think that's what Brad should go for, right? Sonic Volume is probably your best attack to be using because it does 120 damage. It's going to knock out these Ultra Necrozmas, and it forces Harry to use Pokemon Ranger as his supporter for turn, which is not drawing him any cards. Yeah, the, the hard thing that is going to be going for Brad is since uh, Ultra Necrozma actually discards the energy with Luster of Downfall, right. oh, that's it's, true. it's really hard to build up the two unless your opponent stumbles. Right. So we see, yeah, the Pokemon Rangers even in the uh, discard right now. <laughs> At the bottom of his deck, I believe. I think oh, Harry playing an Ultra Ball right now. Looks like he will go ahead and eye up the Grimer. I wonder if Brad it's is thinking, there. ooh, I kind of saw it on his face. Brad, like, oh, okay, he's got that. Uh, maybe Brad wasn't considering that when he discarded the Stealthy Hood. Yeah, well, uh, like you said before, Brad has really taken a, like, a step back from Pokemon. Sure. Uh, it's his first tournament back in a while. Uh, so you might not be used to some of like the, the common stuff in the deck as well. For sure. The Silent Lab definitely being key here once again. It's going to allow Harry to even get off the attack this turn. Uh, we're several turns into it here, but still only one prize card has been taken. Definitely kind of a slower, more grindy game. 
Yeah, and it looks like off the Abyssal Hand, he did not get a double Dragon Energy or a Counter Energy, so we'll see an N here. And this is going to put Brad down to five cards. Harry's still going to find six since he has not taken a prize yet. Off these six cards, certainly looking for that double dragon energy. Needs to start attacking. And if he misses here and Brad can get off the Sonic volume, that could be big, once again, forcing Harry to find that Pokemon Ranger. Yep, and six cards here. There's first Seekers and Float Zones again. Oh, there it is. Finding the Double Dragon Energy, exactly what he needed for the Ultra Necrozma. Hasn't attached it yet. Maybe thinking through the other options in his hand. Yeah, well, there we go. The retreat to the Ultra Necrozma. Attach the Double Dragon Energy, and he will be able to Luster of Downfall. 170 damage. Discard that Prism Energy. Back to you. Yeah, and once again, Brad, in the same situation, going to need to find Dimension Valley. Looks like there is the dowsing machine in his hand. So that is a way to find it. Yeah, dowsing machine has the field blower That's also another. and a rainbow energy. So he will be able to at least try to attack this turn. Uh, granted, it will cost him basically his entire hand. Yeah, uh, that's the thing about dowsing machine. It's so powerful being able to reuse any of these item or trainer cards that you've had to put into this card already. Um, but you do have to discard two cards, right? There is the cost of that. And uh, that's also the thing with using something like Guzma Hala. You have to discard these cards. Um, and sometimes it can put you in tough situations where there's things you want to discard, but also you leave yourself with a very, very low hand size. So it looks there for a Cherish Ball. Mostly getting something just so you can discard uh, that... Snivy and Venusaur Tag Team GX is looking pretty good to discard right yeah, now. Yeah, that's a definitely interesting card that we see from some of these Mewtwo decks. Usually people opt for either the Snivy and Venusaur or the Alolan Marowak. Brad here using the Snivy Venusaur since... The, the, the difference here is that Lost Boomerang lets you Lost Zone two Pokemon, uh, or do 50 damage to two Pokemon if they're knocked out, Lost Zone them. Whereas Snivy and Venusaur's GX attack, it does 50 to every Pokemon in play. Yeah, uh, I actually like including both. Okay. Uh, it gives you a little bit of range against certain decks because against s some setup decks like Zoroark GX and stuff where they have to evolve, the, the Snivy and Venusaur is going to be where you want. Um, but the benefit about Lost Bone Meringue from uh, Alolan Marowak mm -hmm. GX is you're able to do it for free. Right, yeah. You don't have to have any energies, whereas the... Solar Plant GX does require you to have a double colorless plus that Dimension Valley in play. And Field Blower comes down, gets rid of the Float Stone and the Silent Lab. So now Brad will be able to attack this turn. It's just deciding if, how he's going to attack. Right. And it's kind of a weird spot, too, because, you know, Field Blower is one of your ways to get rid of the Silent Lab, which is obviously preventing you from attacking at all. But in order to get off a reasonable attack, it also feels like you need to put the Dimension Valley in play, which is another one of those counter uh, stadium cards. So, um, yeah, it, it kind of puts Brad in a tricky situation. We do see him grab the Guzma and Hala off of the Tapu Lele's Wonder Tag. And it looks like he's opting for no discard, so it's just using the mode to search for a stadium. But hey, that's what he needs right now. Yeah, and that's something you kind of... I mean, he doesn't need to find the tool. He doesn't need to find the special energy. He's already got the rainbow. Uh, you kind of forget that these tag team supporters have optional effects, right? They're you know, usually used for that extra powerful you know, discard two to search for two more cards. In this situation, it can just search for the singular stadium. Rainbow Energy comes down on the active, and then we'll see some Distortion Door activity here. Yeah, and I like what Brad did last turn with his last um, Despair Ray. He was able to discard the Mewtwo Mew that had a lot of damage on it. Unfortunately, this turn, not able to do that, meaning that it's very likely Harry's going to be able to find three prizes on his next turn. All right, double Distortion Door. That puts 40 extra damage onto Harry's bench here. And that puts that Octillery closer and closer to being knocked out. Yeah, and I wonder if Brad is trying to set up a situation where he can just take multiple prizes with the Solar Plant GX. Um, you know, Octillery already 
at a enough damage to where it would be knocked out. One more Distortion Door would put the Grimer with only 50 HP remaining. So maybe we could see Brad trying to set up like a clean board sweep to take his last few prizes. Definitely could be, but Harry will have something to say about it at least. <laughs> Double Floatstone coming down from the board. Uh, has the uh, last Silent Lab in his hand, I believe. Um, but one thing he's going to have to try to find is that Ultra Necrozma to actually start attacking. And another big thing here for Harry is if he is able to find the Alolan Muck, uh, I mean, what, what does Brad do at that point, right? Perfection's not active anymore. He could use Miraculous Duo with Mewtwo and Mew since that doesn't require an ability to use, uh, but would require him to attach at least two energies to it. Oh. Uh, and he's gone through a lot of them. And here is the Versus Seeker for the teammates. Such a powerful supporter card in this expanded format, especially when you're playing a deck that only plays one prize attackers. And right away, it looked like Harry was eyeing up the Alolan Muck. Did see it right here in the deck. So he will be able to grab that out. And Power of Alchemy says no more perfection from you two. Yeah, well, you kind of figure he has to grab that Alolan Muck right now, or a lot of his board's going to get knocked out to just Giratina damage. Harry actually reading the Dimension Valley. Also reading, it looked like he was reading the Muck. Oh, yeah. He Maybe wanted to see if he can attack with the Lolan Muck. Yeah, I think it's got a four energy attack. So he would need to I attach. Like crunch? Yeah, he would need to attach two counter energies to it uh, in order to attack with Brad's Dimension Valley in play. Um, just kind of seeing if that's a play that's open to him. It would. I'm not sure that we'll see it come out, though. Yeah, so he definitely has some options right here. He's eyeing that alone muck. He's also eyeing the double dragon, eyeing the counter. Ops for the counter energy, which I believe he has a Cobalion in his hand. I think that should be enough to take the knockout. Yeah, he, he actually ended up taking the Ultra Necrozma instead of the Alolan Muck. So I think he was kind of in a situation there where he's looking through with the teammates. He's like, I can only get two cards, but I really need three cards, right? I want to get the Muck in play. But I also want to attack this turn. So he kind of had to choose between either attacking this turn or getting out the muck. And it and looks like attacking was the option. To be fair, he has that Silent Lab as well. So it's another like stopgap. He, he didn't really need the Alolan muck. Sure. And Brad has gone through many of his stadiums. I'm not sure if he has any left or not at this point. So, I mean, muck might not even need to come out here for uh, Brad to just be totally shut down. Well, so the thing I would like to see is probably the redundancy of it, because uh, we know that Brad still has that dowsing machine in his hand. Sure. That's able to get something like a field blower or the, the Dimension Valley. But if you had that a little muck and play as well, if he, if, if he was able to find it, then that means that dowsing machine might have had it gone to Stealthy Hood or something like that. Right. And we do see the rescue stretcher come out. Another card that has multiple effect choices on it. You can either put a Pokemon from your discard pile back into your hand, or you can shuffle three Pokemon from your discard back into your deck. After the rotation happened and Guardians Rising left the standard format, this is one of the cards I was the most sad to see go. Yeah. Such uh, a powerful card, uh, just leaving you with options for recovery. Yeah, I, I hate that I have to play, like, multiple of attack <laughs> Pokemon now. Right, right. So there is the Ultra Necrozma swinging with the Luster of Downfall, able to pick up the KO on the Mewtwo and Mew. And that's the one benefit about Harry's deck is, yeah, I'm going to get behind, but when I knock out one of your guys, I'm going to take three prizes. And right. then when I knock him out again, I'm going to take another three prizes. <laughs> So Brad is just going to have to send up that Mewtwo and Mew. He does have the Dowsing Ooh. in hand. Ooh, does top deck Dimension Valley as well. So this Dimension Valley is actually, oh man, I think it's going to almost seal the game for Brad here. It's going to allow his Giratinas to start coming back. He's going to get a KO on that Octillery on the bench. Yep. Go down to three prizes. He's going to take another KO on the active. And that was a huge prize as well Brad took. If you see in his hand right here, he Ooh. did grab the Stealthy Hood that was prized. So we do know now he plays two copies of the card. And that is going to allow him to attack around an eventual Power of Alchemy. And then with a simple Despair Ray, he'll be able to clean up this Ultra Necrozma and leave Harry with just a Alolan Grimer with 40 HP left. Yeah, and this is going to be a situation where Harry's, I think, going to have to draw pretty well off of a Professor Sycamore. Uh, don't see a VS Seeker for a teammate or something like that in his hand. 
Despere comes out. Brad taking another prize. Just two remaining. What does Harry have? Will he be able to bring this one back? He does bench the Ultra Necrozma. Also has that counter energy in hand. Once again, still behind on prizes, can utilize that uh, extra effect. Yeah, the, actually the only way he was behind on prizes was because Brad took a two prize turn last turn. Right. So, at, I mean, honestly, a situation where I think Harry is kind of fine with how that turn played out. Uh, I definitely don't think this is over quite yet. Uh, that stealthy hood grab was definitely huge yep. for Brad. And, uh, but, you know, if Harry has maybe an in hiding away somewhere in his hand, he already has the attack set up. If he could in into a really powerful combination of cards like the Muck and really limit what Brad has access to. I mean, in has been the comeback card as long as it's been in Pokemon. Is that what Harry's going to need to make a comeback in this one? Yeah, but I... Yeah, it, there is an no. There's three Professor Sycamore <laughs> in his hand. Yep, uh, pretty much only one option here. Uh, he could play the counter catcher, would bring up the Jirachi and let him take a knockout, but I don't think Harry really cares about this Jirachi too much, right? He wants to deal with this Mewtwo immune the act if he wants to get rid of the energy, and we're actually in a situation here where I think Brad is pretty low on energy cards as well. Yeah, uh, being able to Luster of Downfall and get that Prism Energy off the board would be huge for Harry here. Uh, Brad especially kind of has a light hand. Uh, we know he has that Dowsing Machine uh, and that Stealthy Hood, but other than that, it's not really much going on. Something, I guess, kind of interesting to note at this point as well, Brad is at two prizes, which means that Harry doesn't even need Silent Lab or Muck in play in Ooh, order to attack yeah. with the Ultra Necrozma, right? A little That's, nifty. So it looks like he does have the Muck. I do expect to see that come down here. Um, but, you know, not something he necessarily had to find off the Sycamore. Yeah, and uh, Brad was actually flashing his hand there. He has that Detonate GX in his hand. So if the Muck doesn't come down, Brad's hand is pretty golden. Yeah, he definitely will have live outs in his deck. Um, Ultra Ball on Harry's side, going to maybe just grab another Ultra Necrozma. Could set up another Rim Raid, but I think he did discard his second Octillery. Yeah, and if you try to go for that Rem Raid as well, you end up falling into, well, maybe it's just an extra prize for Brad. Sure, it could get Solar Planted, um, but the, I think the only way that's going to happen is if Harry doesn't you know, use the Alola Muck this turn, since that will shut off the um, Well, you got the Giratinas. hood. You got the hood, it's fine. That's true, yep. Oh, yeah, for the Giratinas. For the Giratinas, mean. yeah. It, it would work for the active, but uh, uh, Solar Plants, you know, theoretically, if Power of Alchemy wasn't shutting off the uh, Distortion Doors, could knock out multiple Pokemon next turn for Brad's last two prizes. So Harry going to play around all of that, and there is the Muck coming into play finally. I think something that... Harry has definitely been looking for and finally able to get it down. Brad now, with the stealthy hood he got off of his prizes last turn, going to need to find a few more pieces as well. Yeah, I think what we're going to see here is stealthy hood attach and then a dowsing machine for something like a Professor Sycamore to try to draw into everything he needs. But uh, it, it, his deck's, I think, thin enough to where he could, but it, it's going to be a lot of work. Yeah, I mean, and this is kind of a tough spot, too, for Brad, because if he just takes the knockout on this active Necrozma with his Stealthy Hood, um, all Harry needs to close out the game is going to be a Double Dragon Energy. Yeah. So, because uh, there is already 170 damage on the Mewtwo, maybe Brad needs to combine his turn with an in and just, like, really hope that Harry can't find his last Double Dragon Energy. We do know he just special charged two back into the deck last turn, and, of course, that would put Brad to just two cards in his hand, but sometimes you have to go for that play, limit your opponent's resources, um, and just hope that it's able to stick. Yeah, so looking through Brad's discard right now, I see only two Prism Energy and a Rainbow, Okay. along with a Double Colorless. So uh, usually with these counts, they have two Prism at least, mm -hmm. and then another Double Colorless left. Yeah. Uh, so he is drawing to a few outs, but again, like you said, all Harry needs is an energy to seal this game up. We see the damage change Mewtwo. It's so close to being like great here, right? Because you can just <laughs> yeah. move this damage off of the Mewtwo. But it does require two psychic energy and a colorless. So not something Brad's going to be able to utilize. 
Well, yeah. we just got a really good fan through Brad's deck and kind of saw all of his options that he has remaining to him. Yeah, he's definitely just figuring out what to discard that he doesn't want to draw into. Right. Um, as well as not trying to, like, deck out, like, accidentally. But right. um, Tag Hall is something that he's not going to need. There's also the Cherish Ball in the deck that he's not really going to need, but uh, you can't get rid of everything. Right, right. Only three cards get discarded. Actually going to take the Tag Call back, maybe. Uh, nope, not, not a potential use for it. Just going to leave it in the deck. I think maybe realizing that if he's going to Dene this turn, he doesn't want to leave himself with too few cards. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see what he actually targets down with that Dazzling Machine. I think with him leaving the cards in the deck, he's going to opt more towards that Professor Sycamore. Sure. He looked, stopped and looked at the Greninja GX. Mist Slash can knock out the active, but maybe he's looking at Dark Mist GX, seeing if that could be potentially useful. Ooh, yeah. Could put that Muck back in hand for Harry, um, but then... Here he just attacks and yeah. wins. So, <laughs> I, I mean, it's going to really just be, I think, Brad attacks here, takes oh, no. the knockout. He Wait. actually didn't draw a Prism Energy. He Wait. threw the double colorless. His last card in deck was the Prism Energy. He, I think he left himself with exactly eight cards. Oh, no. And that last card, we can see it right there. Oh. He's only got one card left, and it is that Prism Energy he needed. Yeah, and obviously one in the prizes as well. Mm. Uh, man. Um, I don't think there's anything he can really copy with the DCE either. Uh, his he, low punny is prized, and it would only be doing 60 damage anyway. Solar Plant GX, going to do 50 to everything, but that doesn't even take a knockout on anything. I, I don't think he has a, a Pokemon in his hand because he would be able to, like, Sky, sky Return. Return, sure. Um, he's, you can see he's reading all of the Pokemon. Do, do any of these things have... Oh, wait. Yeah. He can actually use Iron Rule GX to buy himself a turn here. But does he have an N in his discard pile? Because he would run out of cards then. <laughs> you were joking earlier about him <laughs> not really using Iron Rule GX. but uh, It could be what saves him yeah. in this one. All right. You cannot attack. Don't have Pokemon Ranger. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. Harry could just get around this right away if he does have access to the Ranger. It does remove all effects in play on both you, the opponent and yourself and all of the Pokemon. It's so. not in the discard. It's still in the deck. He has two Versus Seekers in his hand, but no way to get Pokemon Ranger. <laughs> so, I mean, it might just have to be a pass from Harry. I mean, I guess he could Juni or Sycamore to try to set up an energy on that benched Necrozma, which I think I would definitely like to see him do here. Um, man, an unexpected twist here. Iron Rule GX may be saving Brad in this game. Yeah, the Kobalion GX laying down the law here, saying, nuh uh you can't attack me this turn. Yeah, and you can just see Harry's like not really sure what to do at this point. He's going to play a VS Seeker, look through his discard pile. He's got a bunch of different supporter options in there. He does have an in Cynthia and Sycamore is kind of his best options, I think, is this point. And you could go ooh, Guzma and Hala maybe, but Faba, the stealthy hood. That, and I think that would seal up the game right here. Yeah, and I think maybe if Harry has, you know, kept count and knows what. Well, it depends. Does Brad still have the dowsing? He didn't play it. He did, because he, he, he junipered, right? Oh, yeah, that's right. right. So, yeah, I think Ooh. that Stealthy Hood is gone, and uh, Brad might just not have a way to attack anymore. Yeah, uh, Brad, that will be the game here. Gets that Prism Energy. <laughs> Shows it to Harry right away. This is what I was looking for last turn. A little unlucky to be the bottom card of his deck, but that's part of the game. It happens sometimes. And Brad's going to take a quick look through and realize, I just don't have the cards I need to win the game concede and we're going to move on to a second game that took a long time here in this oh first game. yes it did uh only under 17 minutes to go in this round so i mean it's going to have to be a quick one if brad wants to win this set yeah and that was kind of an awkward setup from harry too where you see him get the double ultra necrozma and the octillery out but he had the hardest time to find that alolan muck Right. 
And this is a situation where both these players are at six and one. You do need to be at at least 21, or excuse me, 19 match points to make it into the second day of competition, which would be at least a six, two, and one record. So even a tie this round would guarantee both of these players will be able to play tomorrow, but I'm sure both of them are looking for a win. You want to get as many match points in day one as you can because it makes your day two so much easier if your goal is top eight. Yeah, you'd rather have 21. Absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Um, so if Brad can win a quick game here, maybe he can find a way to win a three-game set, but... There, there is another option of if he does win that game and then they go to game three and they tie, well, they both make it in. Right. Because there... even win or lose or tie next round, they're already going to have 19 points. Right. So uh, even a tie here would not be the worst thing for either of these players. On Harry's side, though, I bet he's really wanting to win here in this second oh, game. Oh, yes. Going to 7-1 and one compared to 6-2, and two, that's a big difference heading into round 9. You can even tell by their body language right now where, yeah, Brad presented his deck, I think, minutes ago. <laughs> yeah, and uh, he's ready to get this thing moving, ready to move into the second game. Going to see the opening hands from both of these players. Looks like Harry starts with that Kobalion. And prizes the Tapu Lele. That's well, an interesting card we don't see too often from these Ultra Necrozma decks. Necrozma decks. Um, on Brad's side, prize the Prism Energy once again, Dimension Valley, as well as a Mewtwo and Mew Tag Team. Pretty crucial prizes. Yeah, but there we have a Tag Call in his hand. Uh, probably one of the best cards he can get for turn one, just because it gets him that Guzman and Hala Tag Team Supporter, as well as another Mewtwo. Uh, so he'll be able to at least get energy in a stadium for next turn. Yeah, I think Brad's the only person I've seen this weekend actually using Tag Call in his Mewtwo deck. It's something I think most people have foregone for, you know, heavier Ultra Balls. Brad using Cherish Balls and Tag Calls in his list. Yeah, well, I think it's also because he plays a, a thicker line of the Guzma and Hala. There's two of them instead of the usual one. Sure. So he's going to grab the Guzma and Hala. Mewtwo and Mew eyeing up as well. You can kind of see Brad taking a moment here on his first turn. He, he definitely knows he wants to play quickly, right? He wants to give himself the best shot to uh, win this second game so he can, at minimum, tie the round, if not try to steal a quick game three. Um, but he still wants to, you know, play correctly and take his time, check his prizes, see if there's anything super important missing. Well, yeah, that's the big thing about uh, this Perfection deck, too, is you're playing, I think, 10 to 12 one-of Pokemon, essentially. And in some matchups, if one of those are prized and you don't realize it, you could be going for the completely long, wrong line of play. Yeah, absolutely. Something big as well here in the second game. I don't think that the Pokemon Ranger ever got revealed over on Harry's oh, side. Oh, that is true. So if Brad, you know, you see he grabbed the Prism Energy here. If he's going to attach to this benched Mewtwo, trying to make sure that this energy is safe and tries to opt for the Sonic Volume next turn, um, he doesn't know that Harry has that answer. All right. Harry draws that Remoraid. Pretty good draw here to get set up for turn one. Floatstone on the active Kabalion. Has Silent Lab in his hand. Two, actually. Uh, but then a Sycamore. So it's kind of awkward. You don't want to Sycamore those Silent Labs when they're so important to your strategy. Yeah, very, very important pieces, of course, here. And I think Harry's also thinking, like, I know that Brad has a floatstone in his hand. He just got it with the Guzman Hala, so there's definitely a chance that Brad could just retreat this Mewtwo and then use Despair Ray to discard it. So it's 170 wasted damage almost. All right, well, with that Professor Sycamore, Harry does not find a double dragon, but Ooh. does get a Nest Ball to find an Alolan Grimer here. So he'll be able to at least get some semblance of a good turn one. And... and this is something you definitely see good players take note of. I'm sure Harry is very aware that Brad has two Silent Labs in his list. He saw the Dowsing Machine as well. So he knows that Muck... Stealthy Hood. Excuse me, Stealthy Hood. So he knows that Brad has the answers to Power of Alchemy, right? So yeah. something that he's very aware of moving into this last, this second game. But uh, even with discarding that Silent Lab, uh, it puts even more emphasis on Alolan Muck. Right because that's what you need to do in order to be able to attack with the Ultra Necrozmas, either have the Silent Lab in play or get the Muck in play. Yeah, and the Harry's Hand is looking pretty set up for next turn. Supporters have that Octillery as well. Yep, definitely uh, feels like he's in a good spot. Just the energy is all that he's missing. 
Brad was able to discard that um, Neuvern GX. So if he can find another Prism Energy here, as well as a Dimension Valley, which we know he grabbed off of the Guzma and Hala. Yeah, unfortunately, the double colorless in his hand uh, will not fulfill the requirement for Sonic Volume being a Psychic Dark and a colorless. He could actually still get it, though, because he can use the Guzman Hall in his discard pile to just get another Prism uh, Energy since he has the VS Seeker in his hand. Um, but he also true. has a Shaman, so he could try to set up and see what he draws first and maybe he finds a Battle Compressor to use a better supporter this turn. All right, set up 4-3 here. Uh, doesn't find much, but you find another card you would want to discard with the Guzma and Hala, and that's the Giratina. Yeah, I think we'll see Brad discard probably the Giratina and the Venusaur and Snivy, maybe like Ultra Ball instead, something like that, and this will find him the Prism Energy, and right away, we're going to see a Sonic Volume, and now the clock is kind of on Harry. Can he find his Pokemon Ranger and attack uh, in order to... Uh, get around this Sonic Volume. And it's not just once. He'll have to use Pokemon Ranger probably multiple times yeah. in order to be able to continue to stream attacks. Yeah, uh, when you're not able to get the energy off of the Mewtwo in the early turns, it even will come into damage change rules if a uh, Ranger comes down. Right, exactly. And we'll probably see Brad utilize something like that because we could be at a point where... Yeah, Brad's, of course, using Sonic Volume, but then if Harry is using Ranger plus attacking, he's still discarding energy. So Brad might, at that point, more so value um, getting rid of the damage on his active Mewtwo and Mew as opposed to locking Harry's energy out of the game. And the thing to think about, too, is Sonic Volume as an attack knocks out every single Pokemon. In Harry's deck, I think Sans Caballion. Yep, thanks to that psychic resistance, of course. It does do a base 120. You'd think, all right, that's got the knockout. Caballion has 120 HP, but uh, Neuvern's not the one using the attack. Mewtwo and Mew's the one using the attack, and it is a psychic type, meaning Caballion hangs on with 20 health. So, hey, you at least bought an extra turn right there if you're Harry. But, and it's another turn that he can, you know, he, I don't think he really minds losing this Cobalion. It's not going to be a very useful attacker in this matchup. I feel like that's probably a tech included for the uh, Gardevoir and Sylveon tag team matchup. So it's not, certainly not something he minds losing. Evolves into the Octillery right away, but is debating about this Alolan Muck here. I wonder what he's scared of shutting off, why he uh, is worried about, you know, putting it in play. Uh, well, I think it's probably the big Tapu Lele. Okay, maybe so. Uh, Thinking he wants to be able to have that to find the Pokemon Ranger. Yeah, but uh, looking through his deck, he should have realized that it was prized. And opts for the evolution. Gets another Alolan Grimer counter energy as well, but that is not very good right now in the face of Sonic Volume. Yep, he's got the energy, but can't attach him quite yet. We'll probably just see another pass here, but uh, with all these cards in Harry's hand, he's not actually able to really play down a bunch to start drawing with Abyssal Hand. Right. So uh, we might see where he's just cannot find Pokemon Ranger in time. Oh, we're actually going to see <laughs> something oh, yeah. kind of interesting here. Collect for two cards. Nice. And this is one of the things. There's so many legal um, Alolan Grimers, but I believe this is the most recent print. And I think when it came out, everyone was like, yep, I'm playing this one in oh, all yeah. of my um, Alolan Muck decks that utilize Alolan Muck. Uh, like, because just the, the ability to draw two free cards, especially in a situation like this. Yeah, when you're not going to do anything anyway and you're digging for a specific one of card. Yeah, exactly what Harry wanted to see. Now, Brad kind of surveying his options here. I, I mean, if I was Brad, I know that this first game took a long time. I would be drawing and Sonic voluming as quickly as I could. Now, uh, Sonic volume is different from a lot of the usual effects of this attack, like Chaos Wheel, sure. where Chaos Wheel would prevent tools and stadiums. It looks like Harry did not play down the Silent Lab there which would have forced Brad to find another Dimension Valley or another energy to keep the Sonic, sonic Volume lock. Yeah, I think he, what Harry's idea here is, is he wants to hold the Silent Lab to you know, put it in a play on a turn that he's going to use Pokemon Ranger as well. 
right? Uh, because he wants to combine all of the pieces together. But he didn't find one off the collect, it looks like. We might just have to see a Cynthia here or a Professor Sycamore. Yeah, well, he doesn't really need the lab for himself. It's only to stop Brad at this sure. point. And with a little over six minutes left on the clock here, Brad is looking like a pretty dominant position this game, but so far has only taken that one prize, and Harry still gets to do a lot of stuff on his turn. Yeah, it's really kind of a race against two things here for Brad. He's racing against um, the clock. You know, he, the, the clock is definitely against him here. Only six minutes remain. But he's also racing against Harry being able to find this Pokemon Ranger, because I think if Harry just, if it's, you know, stuck at the bottom of the deck, he just somehow never draws into it. And you know, that's Brad what happened would, last game. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we never saw it hit the discard pile where he had those VS Seekers, could have won, it just wasn't in there. Floatstone's coming down, but again, oh, there's the teammates. So eventually, Harry would be able to teammates for the Pokemon Ranger and then Pokemon Ranger and start doing stuff. Yeah, and that's probably what we'll see him do after this Cobalion ends up going down. He could retreat into one of these other Pokemon here, but I feel like the Cobalion is... I mean, you're losing the Floatstone, but you did just put another one down onto the Octillery, so I don't think you mind losing it too much. Brad draws into that Garchomp and Giratina Tag Team GX, looking to discard it with Ultra Ball, try to find some other action here. Does have that Dimension Valley in hand, Yep, that's going to be a you know big card here. Of course, can't attack with the Silent Lab. Stealthy Hood only prevents, allows the Mewtwo still to use its ability against the Alolan Muck. Does still need a Counter Stadium or Field Blower. So there is the Ultra Ball. And this is really, I think, just to thin out his deck. Yeah, it, we see him eyeing up the Mega Lopunny and Jigglypuff tag team here. Not something that's going to be very good for Brad in this matchup. Harry does play the one GX Pokemon, but generally these Ultra Necrozma decks don't play very many, if any, GX Pokemon. And so it's certainly just going to be discard fodder. Now, with that Dimension Valley in hand, Brad will be able to continue the Sonic Vol Volume attack and... Uh, again, it's just the race against the clock right now. Uh, four minutes left to go, and Brad is still continuing his turn here. Yeah, if I was Brad, I would be playing so, so quickly right now. You, I mean, Brad certainly is aware of the clock. Um, you know, he's been playing for a long, long time, and looks like Sonic Volume will take the knockout. Cobalion goes down. Now Harry does have access to teammates, like you mentioned. Let's see if he'll utilize it. Yeah, and again, the biggest thing is his turn is going to take about two minutes. Right. Teammates searches for any two cards. Well, you're going to get your Ranger, but then you need to figure out what you're going to do for next turn. Right. And then how you're going to attack, where you're going to attack. Yeah, and in the Pokemon trading card game, if, uh, if, time, if we do go to time in the second game, the winner of the first game becomes the winner of the match. It's not necessarily... The only time it becomes a tie is if the players choose to intentionally draw or if both players have won a game in the set. Yeah, so it's really going to be hard for Brad. He might even have to like, kind of switch roles, and instead of going like Sonic Volume, he'd have to maybe get multiple prize turns with some spread. Yeah, try to figure something out with the Venusaur and the Snivy. That's so tough to do, though, with the Alolan Muck in play, since he can't spread the damage with Giratina. Um, and, and that's really his best you know, spread attack option, is that Solar Plant GX. I'm actually surprised Brad hasn't like tried to aggressively go for Guzma to take off the Alolan Muck. Granted, his hand probably just hasn't been able to get there. Yeah, maybe hasn't quite allowed for it yet. I think that if he had that option, using Sonic Volume on Alolan Muck is a dream scenario, yeah. I think, for Brad. Ooh, teammates for the Faba here. And again, it's, I think Harry's in the mindset of, I don't care if I win this game, I just can't lose this game. Sure, yeah. It, with only two minutes remaining, all he needs to do is, you know, not lose, the, not not let Brad take his four prizes before the time has been called. Of course, it does not end right as soon as the clock hits zero. It is plus three turns after the turn that is currently happening. So, Brad, I mean, at this rate, should be able to take prizes over the next four turns, each of these four turns. Yep, and Harry's turn is coming up on two minutes here, and he is looking pretty just... Yeah, I, I, you're not going to beat me this game. Uh, you don't have enough time. Something interesting that I guess could happen is if uh, Harry 
played Ranger and put a counter energy on the Pseudo Widow, he could actually use Brad's sonic volume, copy sonic <laughs> volume to lock out Brad's energy, but Brad does have a lot of energy in play. Just kind of a cute play we could maybe see, but not very likely at this point. Well, a big card coming off the top for Brad here in Versus Seeker. It will allow him to actually Versus Seeker for the Guzma. Yeah, and I got to think that's what he's going to target down here. Uh, bringing up that Alolan Muck because, you know, that means that it's going to force Harry to establish another one, right? Yeah, and it was kind of a turn too late as well for the Faba for Harry because he kind of needed the Faba to get rid of the hood sure. while Muck was in play. Right. And just hope Brad didn't have access to the second hood. Of course, Dowsing Machine only gets cards back from the discard pile, and Faba sends that hood straight to the Lost Zone. No way to access it once again. Brad actually has the second hood in his hand, by oh, the way. Oh, well, that would have worked. And Harry looks like he actually wow. is conceding here. Oh, no. So, I mean, with 40 seconds left, so, I... So this is something you would do if uh, you're aware of the time and you're like, okay, I need a, I need enough time to finish the game. Right. Um, but, oh, no. Harry might have just cost himself... 21 match points here. Could have for sure. Like we said, if this does indeed end in a tie, um, you know, these players are both, you know, into day two already at 6-1-1. One, and one. They can play out their last round and hope to get the win. Um, but there's also a situation where these players, one of these players could win in just a couple turns here in game three. That is true. Uh, both players do have Pokemon that could just, you know, like Harry could just start a Necrozma and pass, and Brad could just despair it, oh, knock it out. they just called time. So time has been called the way things work and here at this point. Uh, there is no turn zero because there's no active turn happening, but whoever has declared they're going first will start the game and be turn one. Yeah, uh... That, that's a big yikes. Yeah, absolutely. And I think Brad was actually offering the ID at that point because he's like, it could just, you know, not risk someone getting yeah. donked because no one really wants to, like, win a game like that. But Harry's saying, I kind of do want to win a game like that. You know, if Brad starts Shaman Pass and Harry can just go Ultra Necrozma and knock it out right away. Um, so Brad winning that last game will mean that Harry's going to be turn one here, not turn zero, turn one. Yeah, Brad only has one turn right. in this game three to not lose. Oh, Whoa. my. <laughs> you don't need those in a three-turn game. It's fine. Those are cards you don't want in your deck that, anyway. In this situation, that's actually perfect for yeah. him to see in the prize cards. The counter energy is not going to be activated most likely. And, oh. yeah. Garchomp Giratina GX for Brad here. So, yeah, all Brad has to do really is just draw and pass. There's nothing that Harry can do to take a knockout on that 270 HP Pokemon. Um, but if Harry somehow didn't have another basic here, Brad could try to steal a quick win. But as we see, Rimmer does come down. And, yeah, I think Brad is very aware of the situation. No one can win this game. He'll just draw and pass. And, yeah, I think maybe that's a conversation that's being had at the table right now. Here he does have that Tabu Lele in his hand, not prized this game, so he's going to go ahead and put it down and, nope, not even going to use Wonder Tag, just put it down and pass. Brad. Well, yeah, because Brad still had the opportunity to beat Harry. Right. If he only had, like, one Pokemon. Sure. He, yeah, he had the Remoraid down, just decided, you know what, I'm going to throw all my Pokemon down. Why not? Brad going to go get the Venusaur and Snivy. Look at all my tag team. He's just going to throw it on the bench and pass. And Harry, being turn three, going to attach... Doesn't even have the Silent Lab in play, passes, and this round does end in a tie. Oh, man. I'd, such a crazy way to finish it when they could have just, like, ID'd in the first place. <laughs> right, we just spent the 50 minutes of the round playing it out when we're just going to end in a tie. Oh, come on, man, right? Uh, but, and, and honestly, Harry had that game, right? If he just doesn't oh, yeah. concede game two... He wins the set, right? Moves to 21 match points, and Brad is forced to try to find a win in his final round of the tournament. Yeah, uh, it, it's unfortunate to see there, but again, uh, that's where you just need to be cognizant of how much time's left and know the rules of the game where, yeah, if I won game one and this one's still going on, then, yeah, I, I, I'll win. Absolutely. So that is going to close out the action for us here today. Don't worry, though, guys. We've got a lot more happening in Dallas.